At today's competition, we're competing in Kingsville, Texas at a CBA competition. And I'm gonna be 100% honest, I've never been so disappointed in our brisket. All right, it's 9.07 Saturday morning. We're at a barbecue competition. We're at a CBA competition in Kingsville, Texas. Right now, my burnt ends have a beautiful color on them, so I just wanna go ahead and get these into a wrap just so I don't lose that color. I like a little darker red, whereas the brisket, I don't mind it getting like blacker. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this back on the drum. We're gonna cook it till it's tender. Let's go outside and see what the brisket looks like. All right, burnt ends back on. You can see the brisket flats looking really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this. Now it's over the water pan. So I have a hot zone, I have a cooler zone. We'll put the point over the cooler zone. I'm sorry, over the hotter zone for the time being and we'll continue to cook. That brisket looks really nice. Just a few more minutes and I'll take it off because I'm really liking the way the color looks. At this point, I've already flipped my ribs over. So when I cook on the drum, it just kind of depends on how I'm feeling, but I'll flip these ribs over to try and get a nice fat render on the top side as well, just so I can get everything nice and rendered on the back and on the front. So you see the back has a nice color. I'm not getting anything burnt or anything like that. That's my concern on these drums. So kind of move quick, rotate a lot, but that's just the difference between drum and offset cooking. Since we're out here, we'll go ahead and take a look. Our money muscles are looking nice. I like these two right here. You can see that the size of them and the shape of them is pretty similar. That's exactly what I was going for today. This one off right here, you can see it's kind of a little bit different, but that's okay. We can work with that. Hopefully we can get most of our stuff from these two right here. You see the pork right there has got a good color. We're gonna keep rotating. Everything's looking good here so far. At this point of the competition, we just started our chicken drum and we're gonna cook our chicken for around two hours. So today we're gonna try wings and thighs. Last time we did thighs only, today we're gonna try and add in the wings just to see if we can't get a nice looking box and of course impress the judges. So the biggest thing here is we are trying our best to make sure that the wings and the thighs have a very similar flavor profile. Obviously, they're different types of chicken. They're different cuts of the chicken, but we're going to do our best to get that flavor profile nice, make sure that it tastes pretty similar, and of course, everything tastes really good. All right, it's been right at three hours on our brisket, and I pretty much have it exactly the way I want it. Uh, it's got a good color on it, nothing too crazy. I don't want it to get too, too dark on me. I think it looks really good, so we're going to go ahead, and we're going to wrap this bad boy up. So if you guys remember... A couple of events back, I told you that I believe I put too much liquid in there, so I'm just going to stop right there. I wanted about a quarter of the way up the brisket, maybe a third, and the last time I had put way too much, and it was actually kind of towards the top, and actually really, really slowed down the cooking process, and then also my bark on top was just completely shot. So basically today, my goal is to obviously get this thing nice and tender, Get it to look good, but of course, don't really delay that cooking process too much because as it is, I want this to be done in about five hours so I can get a good rest on it, and uh, we're right on track. I don't put probes into the brisket when I'm cooking it. Um, we like to check it based off of times. So we know that this is gonna take us around five hours. So we'll check this again in an hour, see where it's at, and then we're gonna continuously check every 30 minutes until it's done. I know a lot of people like the probes. We just like to do it a little bit differently than that. We found that checking every 30 minutes, the brisket's never gonna blow way past being done to where it's just completely shot. So we like doing it this way. Man, look at that. So right now I'm seasoning with Southern Hospitality over top of my chicken thighs. We're gonna do the same exact thing on our wings as well. I want that nice beautiful red color and of course that sweet flavor. If we wanna add spice again, we can incorporate it in the end. You guys may notice a little bit of cartilage hanging off of these wings. And if you tuned into the live the other day, you know that I'm actually doing this on purpose. So I want this to be as full as possible of a wing so I can make sure that in the end when I'm trimming it, I have really, really good options for these wings and they all look really full. I'm not worried about this cartilage being there in the slightest because I can take my shears 
and I can get all of it off in the end. So right now, my main goal is just to get that full wing and of course cook these right. I have just a few seconds before I need to get these on the drum. I might be like literally one minute late, but that's okay. So over top, we're gonna do the same thing, Southern Hospitality. The only difference, and I'll show you here in just a second, is we're gonna put some 32 mesh black pepper over top. That's obviously gonna be finer than the 16 mesh, and I think it pairs really well with the chicken wings and the thighs because they are a little bit smaller. So I'll show you guys. So I'm just doing a light sprinkle of pepper over top, not on the bottoms of either of these. I want a little bit of pepper pop. All right, now straight out to the drum. All right, time to wrap our ribs. Same thing as always, butter, sugar in the raw. We got some wrap here. And of course I like to put Blues Hog Original all over top of my butter and my ribs. So we're gonna get ready to put these right back on here in just a second. Gonna go ahead and flip our monies now. Try and get some color on the opposite side. It's looking good, let that keep going. We'll check on this here in another about 30 minutes. Same exact flavor profile on the pork and the ribs, except I'm gonna throw some hot over top. Do you guys do the shiny or the dull side up? I don't think I've ever really, I mean, I know we've talked about it, but I, I don't even know the difference. Put this right back on. Yeah. Oh. Well, look what we almost forgot. We almost forgot our pork wrap. That would have been interesting. Right, 205 on one of my money muscles so I'm gonna see if it's done if it's where I like it the pork itself might not be done but the money's maybe so yeah feels good right now it's 1119 this actually doesn't need to be turned in until two o'clock so we are done pretty early with our pork that's completely okay it can rest in the Cambro for quite a long time Seven minutes to go. I'm running in the trailer now. Excuse me, son. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and hit with that finishing powder. Let's get this pretty neutral. We want it all over top. I want him to get a nice bite of a little bit of everything there. Seven minutes. Sabrina's boxing. She knows what she wants to do. We just turned chicken in. We turned in a box of thighs and wings that I thought looked really good today. Our chicken today did taste really good. Again, our goal is to make that chicken taste like chicken. So I think we really accomplished that. It's time to flip it around, head straight into ribs. So now we're gonna go ahead and start getting that process done and ready. Hopefully in a little bit, we can talk to a few pit masters. I'm trying to walk around, maybe see if we can't get a few tips from you guys from some really good cooks that are here today.
gonna go ahead and put some A1 sauce over top of these. Nah, I'm just kidding. Kind of looks like A1 though. <laughs> this is the uh, rib au jus. I was just telling my wife a second ago, the ribs look dark in here. They're super red. They look really good. But in here, for whatever reason, they look a little bit darker. So it's the lighting in here. We need extra lights. Like I need some right in front of us or something. That's the one thing we've noticed is our lighting is kind of jacked up. So it doesn't really translate. But once we get outside and we get the sauce on them, you guys will probably be able to see a little bit better. They look really nice. We got 33 minutes to turn in. So we're going to let this set for around 10. Then we'll uh, set out here. Nice moisture. I feel like that rib doesn't taste that great. You think it's good? It's good, but not as tender. We'll leave those there. I think these should be a little more tender. These are more tender. Better? Full, really good rack. Yeah. 14 minutes to go. Mess that one up bad. See that? We just turned in ribs and I cannot believe that I messed up the top rib right in the middle of my rack. Now it's time to move on to pork, but I'm extremely disappointed with that. We just turned in our pork and we felt like we put a really unique and really good tasting box in front of those judges. Now it's on to brisket. It's getting really, really hot. So let's finish this competition up. We got 14 minutes. We're pretty far behind, I would say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why don't we just go with these eight? Take those others off. We have again. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to put this back on the pit. We're we're pretty far behind, I would say. We're not gonna be able to go back on, right? Okay. I'm gonna hit the top a little more of this. What if we take those two in the back out? Yeah. What do you think of the box? Um, I don't think it's our best. I don't like the way that looks at all, actually. You see what I'm saying? Like, it looks yeah, no, jacked so up, like, pretty bad. I think it would bad. be good to put those on this side, so these to the side. We got four minutes. What do you think? I think we need to do it, because I don't think that looks good.
Y'all gotta hurry. Literally, run with it. It's just past three, we turned in our brisket, and I'll tell you what, we took it down to the wire. I think my wife had less than 30 seconds before we would have been DQ'd for our brisket. And at least from my standpoint, I think we really forced the burnt ends in today. And I don't think that's a good thing. I think they were good, but I do think that I overcooked them because at one point I completely forgot about them in my drum. So they probably went at least 30, maybe even 40 minutes too long. I don't think that they were mush, but they were definitely a little bit over in my opinion. But man, it just felt really, it felt really bad. The whole time we were getting brisket ready, I don't know what was going on, but nothing felt good. I knew from the get go, like, man, we're, our timing is off. Like something's wrong here. We weren't able to put our sauced brisket back onto the pit like we've done every single time since we started doing that technique. Everything just felt wrong. And then we went to put our brisket in the box. It didn't look like we wanted it. We tried to change the box around. And in my opinion, that's the worst brisket box that we've done in a long time. Like my honest opinion is it looked awful, but it is what it is. Now let's get right into awards. I'm standing here with the grand champion and the reserve grand champion today. Kevin's been killing it this year. He won the last event I was at as well. So both these guys are really good cooks. I brought him in here today because I wanted to ask them if they have any tips for new and upcoming competition cookers. Like what would be your number one tip to somebody that's come to their first competition ever, bro? I uh, would say chicken's going to be kind of uh, a pain in the butt for everybody, and but it's kind of the easiest because you keep it simple yeah don't over don't overthink chicken chicken's supposed to taste like chicken yeah so if you got a good sauce that's the number one make sure you got a really good sauce yeah and make it taste like chicken yeah i can learn from that because if you guys have seen my chickens everywhere so I, I don't know what happened today we got second to last on chicken today but it is what it is we can go on to another day you have any tips bro cuatro d drums all day all day every day it's, it's what's been winning. Hey, and I'll tell you what, back-to-back -back GCs, that's amazing. Good right. job, bro. Thank you. First place chicken on a Quattro D drum yeah, today. First, first place chicken, chicken on a Quattro D drum. So first pork, first ribs, right? Service and you and you got first yeah, chicken. chicken. First chicken. So like, like I said, listen to that chicken tip. Make it taste like chicken. Keep it simple. These are guys I'm coming competing against every weekend. It's hard to beat them. I, have, I haven't beat them, but maybe one day. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on the channel, guys. I appreciate y'all. You got it, brother. You got it. Thank you. Yep. And like I said in the beginning, I have never been so disappointed in our brisket. The timeline, everything just felt completely off. It stinks, right? It stinks to go out there, you're trying to put your best foot forward, and then you just make small mistakes. 
We were looking at the time. We felt like our timing was perfect. We were having issues slicing the brisket. Everything just, man, it just didn't really feel like it was going right. So again, we missed some steps, some stuff that we typically do on our brisket we weren't able to do. And obviously we do feel like that affected our scores just a little bit. Ninth place, okay, it is what it is. It's a top 10. We got a call. We got a walk. We got an award. But of course we want to do better. We want to try winning one of these things for you guys. That's the ultimate goal. As always, we really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks. We'll see you on the next one.